Holy crap. 4.5 is here everybody and it comes with a boatload of stuff. So in this video I'm going to basically be going over literally everything you need to know uh, but most importantly pay attention to my deeds and kingdom leveling section in which I'm going to cover the most efficient way to be leveling up your kingdoms talking about where you should be prioritizing your deeds based on all the fun stats that you can be getting from the different kingdoms and their synergy with the underworld all that fun stuff. So going to be a pretty intense video buckle in strap up let's do this thing. The first thing to talk about is the new kingdom progression system. So unfortunately I can't directly show it since I'm actually uh, unlocked everything. However, they were nice enough to share some graphics with us on the, uh, the post itself. So now when your kingdoms are being uh, completed, so like you always start in Broken Spire for instance, you complete the quest line in Broken Spire which then opens up the next set of quests. So previously what was done is you would do Broken Spire and then it would kind of open up the surrounding kingdoms by default. Now whenever you defeat all of the quests within a specific kingdom or kingdom group, it opens up the others. So this graphic that's on the screen right now basically walks you through what is the unlock order in which everything's going. Uh, the other thing of note is that uh, the previous way of unlocking things like the Soul Forge or uh, anything else like that, uh, those things are now done as part of those group unlocks. So it's no longer, you know, rush your way over to Shentang to get to the Soul Forge or something like that or over to the Blighted Lands. Um, it's not like that anymore. So now it's in these groups. So just as you're running through, you'll have to complete all the quests. Also note that the quest difficulty is now ramping. So before you used to be able to just play them all on normal difficulty. Um, now the quest difficulty is basically just auto scaling as you run through. So some slight changes there on the kingdom progression. I don't think it'll ultimately change too much, although now you can't bum rush to a specific spot like you could before. Um, it's going to make you be a little bit more methodical about it. So worth mentioning for those folks that are still unlocking their kingdoms. Another new thing that they've added here is the updated kingdom screen. So basically this is just an easier way to get at all the fun stuff that we've seen before. The quest line here, um, the changes that they've made to this is that when you complete the quests for the kingdom, the class quests don't automatically start after that. You'll have to go down here and select to do the class quests specifically. So it kind of separates the main quest line from the class quest line. So just make sure if you're doing your class quests, uh, you make sure to glance down here. It's not going to auto let you do them like they did before. But you can now more readily see your kingdom levels and your kingdom power. You can also kind of get a quick visual glance at how close you are to upgrading the next power level. So all of this is pretty fun. Um, the respective screens within them are all the same, but we'll go into the challenges and the kingdom levels a little bit more in detail in a subsequent section here. But new screen, pretty neato. On to the next thing. The other fun new thing that's being added is the updated challenges. So previously these would all just kind of have multiple star ratings and then ultimately you would just kind of complete those. Challenges used to be just a great way to do your soul farming when you were trying to get that Dawnbringer. Uh, it still will be, however, there's updated tiers now. So instead of just running through it all once, you're going to have seven different tiers to run through with various rewards. So the rewards I'll put up on the screen right here. And as you can see, the rewards are kind of okay. There's really nothing like game breaking in here. You're going to get some souls, you're going to get some glory, you'll get some gold, some trade stones, keys, ingots, chaos shards, diamonds and jewels, ingots and chaos shards. Uh, none of these are in like ridiculous quantity, however, What's kind of nice is that if you run through every single kingdom in the game um, and you do all of the challenges for all the kingdoms, it is a nice way to get a decent little boost across all of your different resources. Um, but the cooler thing about all this is that each fight that you do within this is actually going to get you two class XP per fight. So what that means is that for the lower levels for sure, you can be spamming teams that are able to kill very quickly like an explore team for instance and get two class XP for every single one of these fights. So if you're running through all of your challenges for all the kingdoms, I would strongly recommend for the earlier tiers in here, you could probably get away with this for at least the first three to five tiers worth of fights. Um, use a very spammy explore team with your class that you're trying to level up and just get a ton of class XP by doing all of this. That way you can kind of complete your challenges and level a class at the same time. So that's the update to the challenges, something new for us to kind of poke through. But uh, probably the most of note thing in here is going to be the diamonds that you can get. So once you get through with tier 8, that's going to get you 10 diamonds as a reward. If you do that across all of the kingdoms, that'll get you over 300 diamonds in addition to what you have today. So if you're looking for a little boost in diamonds, you got your work cut out for you. But you can farm, at least in the short term, uh, those. But again, once you complete all of the challenges, you can't do them again. So 
spend your time running through them, reap your rewards, and uh, move on with your life. And that is challenges. As far as the balance changes that they added into the game, the real only thing that was changing is really for the newer players. So for the newer players, basically all of the starting weapons that you can get. So if you uh, check out the weapons in here and sort this bad boy by uh, blah blah rarity, and then you scroll down to all these things. So basically all of these weapons down here are getting reduced mana cost and increased damage. So the damage being done by all of these kinds of weapons is being increased slightly and the mana cost is being reduced slightly. So for starting players, they'll have a little bit easier time getting some more value out of these starting weapons. So for the starting players, that's pretty cool. Um, but that's pretty much it as far as the balance changes go. Uh, the only other thing that they mentioned is that when it comes to events, there's going to be a new type of tower. So there's going to be a raven tower added to invasions. So when the invasion event is going on, which is the tower smashing thing, there's going to be, instead of just a random chance of getting two extra sigils, since it would never spawn a raven in that fight, one of those towers now will actually be a raven tower. Uh, we don't know what it does or what it looks like yet. Um, however, you'll now specifically see a raven tower, so you'll know you'll be getting two extra sigils uh, going forward. So as always, you need to make sure you kill that troop in order to get the reward. So uh, that's the only real changes going on from a balance perspective. All right, so let's get to the real meat and potatoes here, the new deeds and kingdom level fun stuff. So first, let's talk about deeds. Deeds are the new resource that are added into the game, which are used specifically for leveling up your kingdom. So you'll see that leveling up your kingdoms requires gold, deeds, and imperial deeds. And the noteworthy thing about deeds is that they require a specific color. These colors always match the color of the kingdom. So if you're looking at a specific kingdom over here like Suncrest, for instance, and then we go and see what kind of deeds it needs, you can see that it's a yellow kingdom and requires yellow deeds. So in order to get a kingdom all the way up to 15, it requires a good amount of this. It requires a good amount of resources in general. It's actually an, an additional 1.35 million gold to get it all the way up to 15 on top of what you've already spent. Then it also requires 70 deeds of a specific color, and then it also requires four imperial deeds. So overall, it's going to take us quite a while. The devs have estimated it's going to take us like roughly a year to get all of your kingdoms up to level 15. Um, the way that you can acquire these deeds is kind of the way that's going to be artificially limiting how quickly you can do this. Uh, you can't really force this to go any faster. So Adventure Board is going to include all the deeds going forward. So all of us have the exact same Adventure Board now with this patch. And this is for balancing reasons. They want to make sure that if a deed is offered in the Adventure Board for you, it's offered for everybody. The last thing that they wanted is that someone just potentially gets randomly lucky and gets a crap ton of deeds and then all of a sudden all their kingdom levels are higher. So um, the Adventure Board is going to be where you go to get your deeds. The other place where you could potentially get deeds is in Flash Offers. So the devs have mentioned that there's going to be flash offers that will include deeds. Um, we're going to have to see what those look like to understand how much they cost, how many you get, all that kind of fun stuff. But potentially that could be an interesting way uh, to level up your kingdom. The main reason you want to level up your kingdom is really uh, two things. So the faction horde stats are kind of fun. Um, however, the kingdom team bonuses are going up a lot. So kingdom team bonus is going up to a tier three and then a tier four. So if you're using an explicit team using all of troops from that kingdom, uh, they're going to get a bunch of extra stats for this. So that's gonna be pretty strong if you're using kingdom specific kinds of teams. The other noteworthy thing is that you get an additional stat. So now with this being added into the game, we basically have multiple ways of getting stats. So getting your kingdom all the way up to level 10 was getting you an extra stat before. Then you could get additional stats by going into your power levels. Um, if you get your power level up to 10, for instance, you can see you get yet another stat. And then if we ever get this all the way up to 20, you'll get another stat. Um, but then now with the kingdom levels, you can get an additional stat. So now each kingdom is worth at least one stat at 10, another stat at 15. You get another stat for doing your power, getting that up to 10. And then theoretically, again, when you get it up to 20. So again, this is raising the floor on what the, or the ceiling, I should say, on what the overall stat bonuses you can have is. So in addition to all these team bonus things, the fact that we're getting all these extra stats means that team fights in the future, in like a year from now, for instance, team stats are gonna look a lot higher than they do today. So this is gonna be a pretty interesting addition. And now I really wanna cover what is the best way to be spending your deeds. So 
there's tons of kingdoms, um, and as you saw in the bonuses, there's actually faction horde stat bonuses. However, there's not a faction for every single kingdom, and there's not all stats are created equal. So in terms of stats, you want to prioritize your magic first, then your attack, then your life, then your defense. To me, that's the right order in trying to be doing these things. So now I'm going to be covering what is the right order in which you want to be doing these things, so that way you're not wasting your deeds on kingdoms. You want to be focusing in on specific kingdoms first, and the nice thing is, is that there's a little bit of uh, not overlapping going on when it comes to deeds, so we can actually use our deeds pretty efficiently. At the end of this, I promise I'll have a little cheat sheet up so you guys can see exactly where is the best place to be throwing your deeds. So don't worry, I got you covered at the end. So when we think about what is the order in which you want to do the deeds, uh, where you want to be using your deeds most efficiently, I'm going to put up this table. So this table is courtesy of Starlight Lemming. Uh, he has this site out there, I'll link to it in the description below. But this is basically giving you a sense of, for every color that you see next to the kingdom, uh, it's telling you what color deeds you're going to need. And then it'll also tell you what stat you would be getting an extra bonus for. So as we can see, and I, as I highlight the magic kingdoms here, there's only two colors we need to care about here. It's purple and it's green. So the nice thing about this is that if we only need to worry about purple and green, we can effectively focus all of our purple deeds and all of our green deeds into these two kingdoms. So for all of your green deeds, you want to be going into Zulkari. So when you see Zulkari out there, make sure that this is where you're dropping all of your green deeds. And then when it comes to the purple deeds, um, there's a reason why you'd want to pick one over another. So for purple deeds, there's also this other table. And this table basically shows you what are the equivalent factions that are there. So as you probably remember, as part of the kingdom power level upgrades, you're also getting faction stat bonuses. So to take advantage of those faction stat bonuses, we want to be leveling up the kingdoms first that actually have a uh, partner or a sister kingdom in the underworld. So when it comes to that, the two kingdoms that actually have this that we would care about is Darkstone and Silverglade. So Darkstone is partnered up with All Seeing Eye and Silverglade is partnered up with Silver Necropolis. So my recommendation is, is pick one of those two kingdoms, whether that's Darkstone or Silverglade, and put all of your purple deeds into one of those. Do not mix it between the two, put it explicitly into one or the other. Um, and then when you do the faction assaults or the delves for that specific underworld kingdom, um, you'll be able to get an extra stat bonus from your horde there. So all of your purples, drop them into one of those two kingdoms. And then all of your green deeds are going straight into Zulkari. So from a magic deed perspective, that's the order in which you should do them. Um, from then on, all of your purple deeds should go into any other magic kingdoms that you want to from there. But again, from a stat perspective, you want to do magic first. And of the magic ones that you want to do first, Darkstone or Silverglade are the ones you want to be putting it into. Um, your green will just go straight into Zulkari. Looking at the next stat we should level, which is attack, there's a couple of kingdoms in here that are worth noting. Um, the first is Suncrest, and the other is Forest of Thorns. So both of these also have equivalent underworld counterparts. So Suncrest links up with Stonesong Irie, and Forest of Thorns links up with Primal Rift. So those would be the ones that you want to prioritize your deeds with first to get the max faction bonus from those. Um, with Suncrest, the nice thing is that yellow is not being used by any of the magic kingdoms that we talked about. So you can put all of your yellow deeds directly into Suncrest. For Forest of Thorns, since we want to put all of our green into Zulkari first, um, the next one that you would want to do with your greens would be Forest of Thorns. So Zulkari, once you're done with all your greens, put them into Forest of Thorn after that. Um, that will be the next kingdom that makes the most sense to level up to get advantage for that faction bonus. But those are the two that you want to prioritize for attack. The last thing that we would want to level up to take advantage of the underworld bonus is Merlantis. So Merlantis uh, is going to be taking blue deeds. So the nice thing about blue deeds is that it's not purple, it's not green, it's not yellow, which we've already talked about. So all of your blue deeds you can prioritize into Merlantis. So this is going to be giving you the life stat. Um, the nice thing about this is that none of the attack kingdoms or magic kingdoms take blue. So the first place that makes the most sense to prioritize your blue is in Merlantis. This links up with the Sea of Sorrow Kingdom in the Underworld. 
So all of your blue deeds can go here. This is your summary of everything that you should be doing. Prioritize magic first, prioritize your attack second, prioritize life third, and then defense fourth. These are the kingdoms that you should be putting your deeds into first and in the order. Um, all of your deeds of the purple color should be going here. All of the green color should be going there. All of the yellow should be going here and all the blue here. That's the order to take most advantage of the actual faction reward that we can get as far as stats go while we're delving our faction assaults or trying to get it up to level 500 with a pure faction team. This is the most efficient order for all of that. The only other consideration that you might have is that a pure kingdom team might be another thing that you could care about. So a pure Glacial Peaks team, for instance, taking advantage of the kingdom bonus that you would get from the kingdom power levels from that. Potentially Wild Plains is another one that you can put together a pure kingdom team that would be of note. Um, you know, you run this with the Shaman class, you would run Glacial Peaks with the Frost Mage class. Um, it's pretty rare that you would run something that's a pure Titan team, like a pure other kingdom team. Uh, they're not all that common, not generally all that powerful. However, that's another consideration that you might want to take into account. Um, but since they are a lot harder to put together and much less often used, to me I'm basing all of this based on the faction assault bonuses that you could be gaining. Whew. We made it guys. So that is all the cool stuff going on in 4.5. There's other minor adjustments, so again in the Soul Forge you could check in here. When you're going to craft stuff it'll actually tell you how many of a specific resource you have, so that's a nice little quality of life improvement. Uh, separately in the, uh, not Soul Forge, in the Gnome Vault, if you jump into there, it'll tell you how many actual gnome keys you have. So when you click into this, unfortunately I can't show you, um, it'll tell you how many keys you have so you can see how many more fights you can do within there. Those are other little quality of life things. But yeah, that's all the fun stuff. So happy gemming, happy updating. Good luck with all of your Guild Wars stuff as you move forward. And let's all celebrate the fact that all platforms now are on the same version of the game. So this 4.5 update went to everybody. So we are all in it together now. So that's everything. This is Keylime signing off. Make sure that you like, subscribe, and all that other fun stuff. Okay, bye.